This Introduction to the California Science Test, or CAST, video is sponsored by the California Department of Education. In this video, we will focus on the purpose of the California Science Test, some CAST basics, that is who takes the assessments, how they are administered, and how they are structured, and the types of results and reports that are produced, along with some considerations about how summative results can be used. California administers a number of summative assessments which address different content areas, different student populations, and different purposes. Most of the summative assessments fall under the umbrella of the California Assessment of Student Performance and Progress, or CASP, system. This includes Smarter Balanced Assessments in English Language Arts and Mathematics, the California Science Test, or CAST, the California Alternate Assessments, CAAs, in ELA, Math, and Science, and the California Spanish Assessment. During this video, we are focusing specifically on the CAST, the Smarter Balanced Summative Assessments for ELA, Math, and the CAAs and the California Spanish Assessment are being discussed in other videos. Let's start with some CAST basics. The CAST is designed to measure the full range of the California Next Generation Science Standards, the California NGSS, covering three domains, Earth and Space Sciences, Life Sciences, and Physical Sciences. You will notice that the fourth domain, Engineering, Technology, and Applications of Science, or ETS, is not represented here as a separate discipline. It is embedded into the other three domains for assessment purposes. These standards integrate disciplinary core ideas, science and engineering practices, and cross-cutting concepts to help students understand how science works in the natural world. The goals of CAST assessment are to promote improvements to teaching and learning, incentivize science instruction in every grade, measure the range and depth of the California NGSS, provide models of high quality items that reflect fidelity to the California NGSS, minimize testing time and costs while providing accessibility for all California students. Notice that the second goal suggests that we want to incentivize science instruction in every grade. Our vision is that good quality science instruction happens in every grade and not just in the tested grades of 5, 8, and high school. So who takes the CAST? The CAST is given to eligible students in grades 5 and 8 and once in high school, for example, grade 10, 11, or 12. Some students in grades 5, 8, and high school will take the California Alternate Assessment, or CAA, for science, instead of the CAST if they are identified in their Individual Education Plan, or IEP. Let's discuss who takes the CAST in high school. High schools have the option to test any students in grades 10, 11, or 12, as long as all students have been tested by the end of grade 12. Grade 9 students are not eligible to take the science test. LEAs can elect to administer the science test to students in grade 10 or grade 11 who have not yet taken the science test. The California Department of Education recommends testing high school students when they are enrolled in their last science course. Many districts are selecting to test their high school students in grade 11 when students have completed most of their science coursework but are not as likely to be distracted by the details of graduation and transition to post-secondary pursuits. Grade 12 students who have not yet taken the CAST will be automatically registered to fulfill the testing requirement. Students who are repeating grade 12 will not be eligible to take the test. When are these assessments taken? For your local school or district, the test will be administered during the school's selected testing window as determined by the LEA CASP coordinator. After 66% of the instructional year for the LEA has passed, each test window is a minimum of 25 instructional days. The CAST testing window goes from January through June. Let's now talk about how the CAST is structured. The CAST is a computer-based test 
that consists of discrete items, which are standalone questions, as well as three or four performance task items that assess a wider breadth of the NGSS. Different item types elicit different information about student learning. Item types are chosen to elicit evidence most appropriate for the learning we want to assess. For example, the evidence from a drag and drop item is different than the evidence of student learning from a constructed response. Performance tasks require students to answer a series of related questions. CAST is untimed and students may take as long as needed to complete it, though on average CAST takes students approximately two hours. Now, let's review the organization of the CAST test. CAST is an untimed computer-based assessment that consists of six test segments and a student survey. Segments 1 and 2 consist of discrete or standalone items. 13 items for grade 5, 14 items for grade 8, and 16 items for high school per segment. Segment 3 is comprised of either discrete items or a performance task. Segments 4, 5, and 6 consist of a performance task covering one of the three domains, Earth and Space Sciences, Life Sciences, or Physical Sciences. Each performance task contains four to six items, with one item being a constructed response. Students will receive at least one performance task from each of the three science domains. The test ends with a student survey consisting of three or four questions that should just take a few minutes to complete. In cases in which the test is administered over multiple sessions, it is recommended that a student pause at the end of a segment rather than in the middle of a segment. The test may be paused at any time during the testing session. However, pausing for more than 20 minutes may result in students not being able to return to previously answered questions. Let's shift gears and talk about how results are reported for the CAST. For the CAST, a three-digit scale score and an achievement level is generated based on the student performance on the test. The achievement level will correspond to one of four performance levels. There are four achievement levels associated with scale scores. Level one, standard not met. Level two, standard nearly met. Level three, standard met. And level four, standard exceeded. There are three science domains where we can drill down even further into student understanding. Domain scores for CAST fall into three levels, below standard, near standard, and above standard. The three science domains are life sciences, focusing on the structures and processes in living things, ecosystems, heredity, and biological evolution. Physical sciences, focusing on matter and its interactions, motion and stability, energy, and waves and their applications. And earth and space sciences, focusing on Earth's place in the universe, Earth systems, and Earth and human activity. So now that we've talked about the types of scores available for the CAST, let's review where you can get these scores. Student results from the CAST are available in several locations, such as Student Score Reports, the California Educator Reporting System, or SERS, and the Test Results for California's Assessments website. Many districts and schools choose to deliver student score reports electronically, in which parents are granted secure access to their child's report through the school information system or parent portal. LEAs can request SSRs in several different languages using TOMS. You may want to check with your administrator or CASP coordinator regarding how your school or district is providing student score reports to parents. More information can be found on the Starting Smarter webpage, which can provide parents with information and resources surrounding the CASP assessments and score reports. 
The page is available in English as well as Spanish. Educators also have a way to dig into details about their local CAST results. Once a student completes the assessment, the student scores will be available in the California Educator Reporting System, or SIRS. SIRS is a free and powerful tool available to all California LEAs from the CDE. It's a one-stop shop that offers LEA staff the earliest access to the latest assessment data, as well as historical assessment data. Typically, an LEA can access results in SIRS after scoring is complete. This allows educators to analyze student assessment performance prior to the public release of all results, which usually occurs in the fall. All users with a TOMS account can access SIRS. However, teachers will need students rostered to them in SIRS by their LEA or site coordinator in order to have the results to view. SIRS will show summative results for the grade level selected, the student score distribution, or what percent of the students received each score level, as well as individual student results. There are many more features available in SIRS that we won't cover in this video, but please check out the Introduction to SIRS trainings for more information. Educators, as well as the general public, can also get CAST data from the California Department of Education's Test Results for California's Assessments website. In order to view statewide results, you must go to the Test Results for California Assessments website at casp-lpac.ets.org. From there, select the assessment for which you would like to view results, in this case, science, to view results for the CAST. When using results, summative results really provide the big picture and should always be considered in combination with other information. Remember that summative assessment results are just one of many indicators schools and school districts can use to guide instruction and support student achievement. Summative assessment results should not be used as diagnostic tools to track students or determine ability-based grouping or as a sole determinant for education decisions. Consider using summative assessments in much the same way a hiker might use a compass. Results from a summative assessment can provide general information and direction to help guide next steps. However, they don't provide detailed turn-by-turn -turn indicators. They can help educators compare the performance between student groups or across school districts. They can illustrate trends in grade levels, schools, and school districts within an overall content area, as well as in relation to the claims within each content area. They can help track progress toward readiness or college and career. This information could be used to validate strengths and or prioritize needs to be addressed through school or district-wide professional development. They may also inform instructional planning and help educators identify interim assessments to administer during the school year. Thank you for watching this video about the California Science Test. We hope it has benefited you and provided you with some tools to further build your understanding.